The problem is, this is someone we're talking about could win the Republican nomination. And he's going to be in court March and April, May and June. He, by his own words, said he's going to be spending more time in court than he is on the campaign trail. That's a problem. Republicans will not win if Donald Trump is the nominee. Now, she's trailing in the polls by double digits, but did yesterday's Fox Town Hall with Nikki Haley move the needle ahead of Saturday's primary? What, what do voters need to hear from her or from Trump to make their decision? So we decided to ask them. Raymond's back, and he's joined in Greenville, South Carolina, by a panel of undecided voters, Jason, Tracy, Eric, Dakota, and Matt. All right, Ray, it's great to see the panel there. What's everybody saying? Well, you know, I asked everybody, Laura, before we started, what was the big issue for them, the number one issue as they go to the polls? And what was it? Immigration. 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 The border and immigration. Why? Jason, you are a pastor. Yeah. Why are you concerned about this issue? The, just the, the amount of fentanyl and the drugs that are coming over. I've been to way too many over funerals of people who've overdosed on fentanyl. And the resources that are being used to house migrants could be used to help the, the homeless here. Mm -hmm. the, Tracy, you also very concerned about the border and what to do about the 10 million people who've come into the country under Biden. That's what I'm worried about, the logistics of finding these people and t sending them back home. Now, Nikki Haley said E-Verify is what she would use, and that's great, but criminals aren't looking for jobs, and E-Verify won't affect them. Mm. So I'd like to know how we can get them before they commit a crime. Dakota is a student here in South Carolina. You're concerned about the border. Why? You would think students wouldn't be concerned about this. I'm honestly really concerned because um, at school I study criminology, and my colleagues are just talking about it all the time, about the fentanyl epidemic that's coming mm. from the border and how it's just ravaging even our campus. And, Matt, your big concern. Well, you know, our, the wall has not been completed. We've got to get that done. But I've also never met an American who would open the door and let someone in their house if you don't know who's coming in or who's on your front doorstep. Mm -hmm. Eric, I know this is another burning issue for you. You were very impassioned about it earlier. Yes, human trafficking for me, the, the, the part of, the, of that destroying our America as far as yeah. the thought of, of children being molested, just, it just sickens me. Rips you up. Yeah, me too. Uh, Laura, I know you have a question for the panel. Well, I'd like to know what everyone thinks about the additional request for $60 billion more for Ukraine. Uh, Trump tried to get $5 billion for a wall, and that was summarily rejected during his yeah. time in office. So that it put us up into about $160 billion uh, for Ukraine, and they're now obviously at a stalemate there. Yeah. Okay. Who supports more funding for Ukraine? Oh, I got one in the back. Matt's doing this. Why? <laughs> Well, I'm all about, you know, defending Ukraine from Russia, but I would at least like to know where the money's going to. There's got to be some sense of accountability, mm. and we continue to send so much money, but when is another, kind of, is another country going to pay their way? Yeah. Go ahead, Tracy. I'd like to see us squeeze Russia financially so they're not able to continue the war more than just throwing money at Zelensky and not knowing where it's going. Mm -hmm. I would Tracy. like to see, you know, accountability. Where's the money going? Who's getting it? Are they, you know... The Ukraine just lost the city, and they said they had no weapons. Where's the money for that? Yeah. I, I know uh, that some of you also were very concerned about inflation and what it's doing now. That was kind of the second-tier issue. Why is that so important? How are you feeling in this community, Eric? Uh, going to the grocery store. You can't even buy a hamburger to make a hamburger helper nowadays. It's so expensive. For the average family, they can't afford it. What are they going to do? They can't afford it. Mm -hmm. the, the other big issue, you heard Haley raise a little bit of it. Uh, she has made the age of Donald Trump and Joe Biden central to her campaign. Does Donald Trump's age concern you all? No. no. Not me. No. I would say in general we should try to go more towards younger people running for office. Uh-huh. Okay. Laura, you had another question. Well, I, I think the bottom line is... What do you think our role should be in the world when we're $37 trillion in debt when we can't defend our own border? I mean, you're, you, people are being called pro-Putin sympathizers if they don't think we're spreading ourselves too thin. Do you think the pro-Putin sympathizer line by Haley and others, is that fair or accurate, given what so many voters and obviously Trump believes here? No. Go ahead, Jason. I see you. Not it. Yeah, no. Um, 
you know, we're like I said, we're spending way too much money. No, no American veteran should be homeless in this country. Yeah. Matt, you wanted to add? Something? I would agree with what he said. You know, it's not necessarily that we're standing by Putin by not, you know, supporting funding for the Ukraine. The issue is we need to know where the money's going and why haven't other countries who want Ukraine to win this war, haven't, why haven't they paid their fair share? Yeah, Tracy, they really have tried to pitch this, though, as if you don't support sending more right. money to Zelensky and Ukraine, you're a Putin sympathizer. How about becoming energy independent and squeezing Russia out of all the oil that he's selling to Europe and China and whatnot? And th then he won't be able to fund a war. Dakota, you have any concern about this? Yes, I definitely think that inter energy independence is very important. We built two big docks in Germany to give them energy when we were making it under the Trump administration. Mm -hmm. And now those docks are not being used because Biden cut it all down. And we need Keystone to go back pipeline. to it. Yeah. Keystone Pipeline. Keystone Pipeline. Go. Okay. Yeah. And, and what do you make of what do you make of, of Nikki Haley's uh, contention there that Donald Trump's going to spend the rest of the campaign in, in a trial, in a courthouse? Does that concern you? You have to look at just the charges in general, and you can actually see how bogus they are. Mm -hmm. Bogus or not, he will be in court, and it is a little bit of a concern. I do think they're bogus, but um, it might be concerning. Eric, very so quickly. far, all of these cases have, have actually helped Trump in the polls. So yeah, therefore, he's grown. <laughs> he's grown, so it doesn't seem to be hurting him. No, Go ahead, Laura. You wanted to ask something else. Dakota... Yeah, D Dakota, the issue of gun control that they like to, you know, call gun safety is something that the left thinks will really get suburban women out there and, and other young people that they're concerned about that. Um, do you think that's something that will be a, a effective push for the Democrats? I definitely do. And I think the Democrats are going to play their games like they usually do. But at the end of the day, this is a constitutional issue, and they need to understand that in the Constitution, it plainly states what we have, and that's the Second Amendment. That's freedom, to the right to bear arms. And I think that we need to not uh, be looking at taking that away. I think that that's going to be very important. I know that my members in my college Republican chapter think it's very important. Mm -hmm. Matt, you voted for Donald Trump last time. You're not this time. What's holding you back? Well, I wouldn't say I'm not this time. I, I wouldn't okay. classify it as that. The thing that I want to hear about Donald Trump for quite some time, we've been hearing the vendetta. I want to hear his plan to move our country forward. Let's put the past behind and let's move the country forward. Let's not worry about all who we have to pay back. Let's worry about how we can move this country forward. Laura, I'm going to let you close this out to, with the panel. Oh. Um, guys, what do you need to hear from uh, former President Trump tomorrow to make your decision on, mm. on whom you're going to vote for? For, for me, how is he going to win? We've got to win. We've basically lost two yeah. national elections back to back. It's mm -hmm. time to win. He said it's all about the winning. Mm -hmm. Let's win. Thanks. What do you want to hear from him, yeah. Tracy? I'd like for him to stop calling people names and he's got really great <laughs> policies. Let's hear about the policies and move on. Okay. I want to see how he's going to bring inflation down because, mm -hmm. you know, I, the work I do, it, it's affected because I can't feed as many people as I normally would. Yep. Guys, we are out of time. Laura, we will see you tomorrow and we're going to bring the panel back to let you know how things shook out in their reaction to Donald Trump and the big town hall. Can't, can't wait, Raymond. Thank you, panel. We'll see you tomorrow. I'll be there in a few hours. That is it for us tonight. Remember, tune in tomorrow. And if you have questions you want me to ask Donald Trump, you can tweet me or X me, whatever we're calling it now. Um, and I'll consider actually asking those questions. And we'll be in Greenville, South Carolina. I'm very excited. This is going to be foreign policy, domestic policy, legal policy, the weaponization of government, the border, all the issues we care about. Jesse is next. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.